right. Okay, so you guys can hear me and see my screen. Yes, yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's jump right into it. So as you guys can see, I brought you some of the latest headlines and let me read them out for you and let's figure out what they all have in common. So Optus reveals more than 2 million customers have personal ID numbers compromised in cyber attack, which means they got revealed. Hackers tried to poison water supply of Florida town. Hackers have stolen record three billion in cryptocurrency. And Revolut confirms cyber tech exposed personal data. So what all of these headlines have in common is one thing, and it is cybercrime. And today I'll be talking about black hat hackers versus white hat hackers. So before we get started, we first of all have to define what is even hacking. After that, we can talk through the differences between the hackers. Next up, we have the business context. After that, the key takeaways, including a conclusion, and last but not least, the Q&A. So how can we define hacking? Let me read out this definition and explain you a little bit more about it. So a commonly used hacking definition is the act of compromising digital devices and networks through unauthorized access to an account or computer system. So if I would do a survey with you guys and ask you if you had a positive or a negative picture of hacking, I would say 90% of you would say rather a negative than a positive image. And that's also what the first part of this definition tries to tell us. So let's continue. Hacking is not always a malicious act, but it's most commonly associated with illegal activity and data theft by cyber criminals. So to sum this, definition up, it tries to tell us that hacking is a very unethical act. So let's keep this in mind and continue with the next slide. Cybercrime in 2021. Let's look at some numbers. As you can see, the graphic shows us that the total loss was 6.9 billion due to internet enabled crimes in 2021. What is most important about this graphic is that it shows us all sectors are affected not only the real estate or the investment scans, they are like many different sectors. And it's a huge loss in terms of cybercrime. And another important thing is that this is just the tip of the iceberg because these six sectors are just the most affected sectors and they don't show all the sectors which were affected due to cybercrime. But cybercrime wouldn't be a problem if there wouldn't be growth. Instead, there's a huge growth. And Experts and professionals expect the growth to 10.5 trillion by 2025. We started in 2015 at 3 trillion due to cybercrime costs. What does it mean? It's a huge increase over 10 years and basically the whole world is affected. Another point is that it's a huge underground danger because we don't hear every day about cybercrime in the news, which means it is very under our radar. So, with that being said, let's talk through the differences between hackers. So the first one, a black hat hacker. What is a black hat hacker? A black hat hacker or black hat hackers are criminals who break into computer networks with malicious intent. They may also release malware that destroys files, holds computer hostage or steals password, etc. So if I ask you guys again, is a black hat hacker a uh, rather an uh, ethical or an unethical person, I think the answer is clear. A black hat hacker is a very unethical person. And you might ask yourself, what does a black hat hacker even do? So these are just five examples. For example, deploy phishing attacks, exploit security vulnerabilities, blackmail victims, sell your sensitive data, write malware and other malicious code. So these are just my five examples, what black hat hackers do. And you might have been in touch with a black hat hacker as well. For example, if your Netflix or Instagram password was changed out of a sudden and Instagram tries to tell you that it was changed from Buenos Aires, somewhere you've never been, then you can be sure that this has something to do with hacking. But what are their intentions or their reasons 
for their behavior, trying to make money. Obviously, okay, we all want to make money, but black hat hackers don't go the legal way or ruining someone's repetition, for example, for revenge or gaining notoriety to be a name out there in the modern society. But let me tell you guys, they're not only the bad guys, they are also good guys called the ethical hackers or white hat hackers. And they are basically the antithesis of black hats, which means the complete opposite of black hat hackers. They exploit computer systems or networks to identify their security flaws so they can make recommendations for improvement. What does it mean? They basically want to prevent cyber attacks or cyber crime by black hat hackers. So what did they do to do this? They educate users about various cyber threats. They, they identify vulnerabilities. They help organizations strengthen, develop software, or make contingency plans in the event of a cyber attack, which means they would do everything with the hacking knowledge to prevent cyber crime and protect big companies or small companies, doesn't matter. So what are their intentions? As I said before, they want to develop security products to protect companies. They want to educate users about cybersecurity so users are aware of this danger and they want to help companies to be compliant. So if I ask again, are there even ethics in this hacking business? The answer is yes. But the main difference between the two is the motivation. So black hat hackers who access systems illegally with malicious intent and often for personal gain act very unethical. White hat hackers work with companies to help identify weaknesses in their systems and make corresponding updates act ethical. Okay, so let's keep this in mind and let's talk business. In 2017, there was a cyber attack called WannaCry ransomware attack. What was it about? It was basically a worldwide cyber attack where mainly Microsoft systems were affected. So what happened? You can imagine you just want to use your computer, but you can't because it's locked. You can't use it for anything. And out of a sudden, a black hat hacker contacts you and says, hey, if you want to, to use your computer again, you have to pay a certain amount of cash, which means they blackmailed the victims. So big companies who, are, who have lots of cash are aware of this and learn from this. So what did they do? For example, Google, they paid white hat hackers more than 1.5 million, which means they invest in white hat hackers or they invest in bug bounty programs. So what are bug bounty programs? Bug bounty programs are companies who basically hire white hat hackers and companies like Google approach these and tell them, hey, please uh, improve our system. Please check for bugs. Please protect us from a potential cyber crime. And they pay huge paychecks. For example, a 17 year old teenage boy received a 150,000 paycheck from Google for finding one important bug in their Google system. And they would rather pay huge paychecks to white hat hackers who protect them than paying even bigger paychecks to black hat hackers who access the systems illegally. And Google is not only the, the only company who invests in white hat hackers. Facebook, Twitter, Uber, all these different and um, huge companies we're all aware of invest in white hat hackers to protect themselves. So to sum this all up, when we look at this Venn diagram, we can see the black hat hackers and the white hat hackers. What they have in common is one thing, and it's hacking. Besides that, they don't have anything in common because their intentions, their motivation, and how they act is completely different. When we compare it, we have ethical against unethical. We have attack against protect. We have educate and manipulate. As you can see, right hand side, very unethical. Left hand, very ethical values. So, what are my three key takeaways for you guys? So, the main difference between the two is the motivation for their behavior. Black hat hackers lack in ethics, violate laws, and break into computer systems. White hat hackers are ethical hackers whose motivation is to identify security vulnerabilities and protect companies. And with that being said, thank you very much, and on to the Q and A.
So, um, what is ethical hacking and what it is used for? Mm, it is a permitted attempt to acquire uh, unauthorized access to a computer system. And uh, the main goal, like the, the main goal is to prevent cyber crime and attacks. Yes, that's true. Okay, then the second question, is ethical hacking even legal? Explain. Um, yes, as long as it's done with the permissions of the owner to uncover faults in the system and provide a way to fix it. Yes, that's true. So keep in mind, ethical hacking or white hat hackers, they act legal. Name free or name key benefits of ethical hacking. So first, first of all is like primary benefit and it prevent data from being stolen and misused by a malicious act attackers. And Secondly, is discovering vulnerabilities from the from an attacker's point of view, so that so that weak points can be fixed. And lastly, implementing a secure network that prevents security breaches. That's Does true. That okay. Yes, that's true. There are even more key benefits of ethical hacking, as I mentioned before. But these are like three key benefits. So the last question. Can you think of rules and responsibilities of an ethical hacker slash white hat hacker? Um, report any security branch and vulnerability and uh, keep the discovery confidential mm -hmm. and erase all trace of the hack after hacking the system. Yes, that is true. So these are just like basic rules and responsibilities if you work as an ethical hacker or white hat hacker. And yeah, so these were my questions for the two other presenters. And let's continue with the questions for the audience. First question, is cybercrime expected to increase or decrease in the future? Explain. Yes. Um, I think it might be expected to increase in the future as we have like more access to the internet and maybe because the accessibility of the internet may be allowed uh, the way for the hacker to actually like hack into your information by, by you know the the internet of um the access uh of the network so i think it might be like these kind of things are the consequences and increase the um the amount of cyber crimes in the futures but um it, it can also be it could decrease depending on the regulations and you know any alternative plan that we have in order to avoid this kind of um problem but in my opinion it will increase definitely increase in the future yeah very good and complex answer and it's completely true so it will increase or is expected to increase by experts in the future um second question name three th things black hat hackers do just give three examples i think the first one was varit uh first is white malware and other uh, malicious codes and mm -hmm. second is deploy phishing attack and third is uh exploit the security Vulnerabilities. Yes, that's true. Okay, let's continue with the third one. Give examples of white hat hackers' intentions. Claudia? No, I raised a hand for the previous question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, if you don't want to answer this one, then maybe someone else. You can also, I mentioned examples, but you can also think of examples which come to your mind. But uh, Maimas? Um, the third question, right? Yes, the third one. Okay. Uh, uh, they develop security product. 
mm-hmm. educate users about cyber security and help companies be compliant. Yes, yes, that's true. Okay, now the third question is related to my first graphic I showed. Um, which sector was most affected um, due to cybercrime in 2021? Which has the biggest loss in 2021? It's a very, how can I say, popular fraud because we all use it daily. Okay, it's basically email fraud. So business and email account compromise was the biggest um, or had the biggest loss in 2021 due to cybercrime. So this is just um, a question everyone could answer. How would you describe hacking in your own words? Just your personal opinion. How would you describe it? Okay, the first one was Nichala. Uh, For hacking is, uh, I think it's uh, some people attempt to exploit a computer system or a pirate network inside a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tai, tai Soon, do you have another um, definition for hacking in your own words? So I think like hacking is a process of accessing the computer system or network like without any like authority authorizations. Okay. Okay. If no one else wants to answer this question, then uh, okay, then <laughs> on to the last question. Why do we even need white hat hackers? Utsaya? Uh, to help increase to help increase the security of the company and prevent the company from the black hat. Mm-hmm. True. Um, does anyone else want to add something to question number six? Uh, not Takan? I think in terms of like the organization, um, why hacker, um, why hat hacker can help the company to be able to like, um, fake their downturn, like change their, um, I mean like the, the, the company data to be better and serve the customer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for your answer. Okay, if no one else wants to ask or answer questions, then on to you guys. So you guys can ask me now and hear my references just for the record. Claudia? Yes, so you gave example of the big companies, how they protect themselves from hackers by hiring the white hat hackers. But mm-hmm. The question is, how can smaller companies pro- protect themselves? Um, so smaller companies, um, they have basically two options. Either they have an IT expert in their firm already, which they pay a normal salary, or they invest also in white hat hackers because companies like Google are huge companies. So they basically have to put a lot of money in there. So they are whole system is secured but smaller companies they wouldn't need to put millions on the table to um, protect themselves but these are just the two ways they could um, yeah, prevent cybercrime. Um, Panita? Um, is there any advantages of black hat hackers? Um, there is as, or let's say black hat hacking is very illegal, but sometimes black hat hackers have a very good knowledge about hacking. And in the past, there were also black hat hackers who then converted to white hat hackers, which means it's a huge value to the white hat hacking company. If a black hat hacker 
changes his mind and motivation and becomes a black attacker because he has such a good knowledge of attacking and knows the POV of a black attacker. So this would be an advantage of um, a black attacker. Um, UNG. So how does cybercrime impact business and the society? Um, it does a lot. For example, um, fake news, hackers um, publish fake news, or they, um, for example, if in politics, they also, um, or it's been said that they um, basically um, had impact on a certain selection and this plays back to the society because if black attackers publish fake um, fake news, etc., it's like um, it has a very huge impact on the society. And um, yeah, just be my answer. Um, Vanista Khan. Do you think it is ethical to hack a criminal data to prevent potential crime? Um, no, I think, uh, or I think it is ethical to hack a criminal um, criminal or a black hat hacker to prevent cybercrime, because this is basically um, what will prevent even more cybercrime if we um, try to protect the society or companies. And I would say that this is ethical to um, hack a black attacker to prevent a cyber crime he would do with his knowledge. Barbet? I want to ask this, how can we touch big companies that uh, we, we will not get banned, if we, we, we will not get hacked accounts in the use, like hacker in the company, or we should get uh, our own white hacker, white hat hackers. Sorry, um, could you repeat it again? I didn't understand the question uh, exactly. Like how can we touch big company like Facebook to uh, like they will not hack our accounts in they use hack uh, okay. the company. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I got it. So they basically also have to sign a contract like we have to do when we work for a company that we don't tell the insights. And um, that's the same for white attackers. So they have basically a very strict contract to, um, yeah, to access the computer system to exploit it to find bugs but as you mentioned it it is definitely a, a good question because companies have to be sure that this white attacker isn't someone who does it for the other side but um, the contract basically ensures that um, this wouldn't happen to the company okay so i want to ask you that if we already have white hat hacker there are any risks that black hat hacker can hack your information? Um, what information? Your personal information? Or what do you mean exactly? Um, the information like the business information. Okay, so your question is if it's even possible if a company has white hat hackers that black hat hackers access um, the company's information, for example? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Um, Yes, it is possible, but it's not most likely to happen because um, white hat hackers have basically the same knowledge like black hat hackers, but there are always ways to enter um, a system illegally. And even a white hat hacker can't prevent all the system, uh, all the um, cyber attacks but it's not likely to, um, to happen if you have a white attacker in your company. But during the time, there are like different ways and they, um, they are um, developing. So black attackers also learn and they may find another way to access the system illegally. But if you have a white attacker in your company, it's not most likely to happen. Okay, thank you.
I think that's all for today's sessions for Paul. Paul, really amazing. You did very good. Oh, both sides there. Sorry. Yes. One last question. Uh, I have a question. Like the algorithm that listen our voice and track our location, like Facebook and Instagram, as as they define as a hacker. Um, uh, I think this is. This has more to do with um, data security, and it's not about hacking because we actually um, approve them to do so by by using their apps, for example. 